Hello and welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigeria's leading television initiative on the business of brand management and the management of brand business. It is a 30-minute potpourri of brand news, products launch, brand personality interview, brand of the week, brand in focus, industry conversation, consumer insights, market update, and everything that is aimed at promoting the brand idea. I am Dele Agadumo. The Nigerian marketing and advertising industry, no doubt, offer a huge potential for prospective investors and professionals with requisite skills and competences to tap into the market. Marketing Edge on TV is a what period of happenings and developments in the integrated marketing and communication space of the Nigerian economy. Watch out for top players, gladiators and professionals in the competitive business of brand management and management of brand business in Nigeria. From the cerebral and glamorous advertising professionals to the well-groomed marketing whisket dictating and directing brand management business. Watch Marketing Edge on TV, only on TVC News. It is still Marketing Edge on TV, your number one TV show on the business of brand management and the management of brand business. Let's take some brand news. Nestle and Starbucks Corporation have announced the closing of the deal granting Nestle the perpetual right to market Starbucks consumer packaged goods and food service products globally outside of the company's coffee shops. Through this alliance, the two companies will work closely on the existing Starbucks range of roast and ground coffee, whole beans as well as instant and portioned coffee. The alliance will also capitalize on the experience and capabilities of both companies to work on innovation with the goal of enhancing the product offerings of coffee lovers globally. In a bid to make the Advertisers Association of Nigeria Advan more relevant and value-driven, the leadership of the association has inaugurated five different committees and charged them to find creative solutions that will provide a more enabling environment for marketing to flourish in Nigeria. The committee are Membership and Value Committee, Education and Capacity Building Committee, Stakeholder and Advocacy Committee and Public Sector Engagement Committee. According to the first Vice President of the Association, Mr. Wasiu Abiola, who gave the welcome address during the inauguration ceremony in Lagos, he said membership of the committee have been drawn from member companies with a charge to provide market-driven solution to deepen the association's relevance and impact on its members. Multi-Choice Nigeria said it has appealed against interim court order dated 20th August from the Federal High Court regarding the price adjustment implemented in August 2018. In a statement, the pay TV company said it believed that the order was an affront to the free market economy Hence, its decision to file a notice of appeal and an application for stay of execution pending the hearing of the appeal. The Consumer Protection Council has accordingly been served with the requisite processes in the light of the application for stay of execution. The status quo therefore prevails. And Multichoice has assured that it will always operate within the ambit of the law and will continue to work with the authorities to ensure the best outcome for customers. A leading telecommunication giant MTN Nigeria has launched its latest innovation MTN Impulse at the landmark event center Victoria Island, Lagos. The new product is intended to deepen MTN's youth-centric positioning. It is also designed for twins and teens ages 9 to 15, which will enable them learn and gain useful skills while having fun. In order to drive home the brand message, MTN transformed the launch venue into an impressive wonderland tagged Impulse Planet, providing attendees with lots of memorable attractions and activities. This included a virtual reality masterclass facilitated by 13-year-old JSS3 students of Balulua Odelano and the youngest hyper-realism artist in Africa, Karim Waris Olamileko of Waspa Art, both of whom inspired children at the event. 
MTN Nigeria has announced the appointment of Mazin Moro as its new Chief Operating Officer, effective Monday, August 6, 2018. With over 22 years' experience in the telecoms and ICT industry, drawn from the various MTN operations across Africa and the Middle East, Moro joins MTN Nigeria from MTN Iran Cell, where he had also served as COO since July 2014. The Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, MBS, has disclosed that the Consumer Price Index, CPI, which measures inflation, has gone up by 0.09% to 11.23% in August 2018, compared to 11.14% in July of the same year. NBS said this represents the first year-on-year -year rise in headline inflation following the 18th consecutive disinflation. The agency said increases were recorded in all divisions that yielded the headline index. According to NBS, year-on-year -year prices advanced faster for food and non-alcoholic beverages, 13.16% compared to 12.82% in July. Recreation and culture, 8.32% compared to 8.28%, and communication, 6.32% compared to 5.87%. The inflation rise is coming a couple of weeks after the Bureau released the quarter two 2018, which indicated that the economy recorded a decline in performance from 1.95% in the first quarter to 1.5%. And that's brand news on Marketing Edge on TV. Stay with us. The Nigerian marketing and advertising industry, no doubt, offer a huge potential for prospective investors and professionals with requisite skills and competences to tap into the market. Marketing Edge on TV is a what period of happenings and developments in the integrated marketing and communication space of the Nigerian economy. Watch out for top players, gladiators and professionals in the competitive business of brand management and management of brand business in Nigeria. From the cerebral and glamorous advertising professionals to the well-groomed marketing whisket dictating and directing brand management business. Watch Marketing Edge on TV only on TVC News. One corporate brand which has distinguished itself by setting the pace with regards to its great strides in local content records is Sono Group of Industries, a well-diversified conglomerate in Nigeria and a key player in the nation's industrial growth. Over the past 40 years, Sono Group has made substantial investments and deployed great managerial prowess in diverse sectors of Nigeria's economy to lift the standards of products on the one hand and the standards of living on the other hand by developing and providing world-class products at locally sensitive prices while effectively providing platforms for technology transfer to Nigerians and engaging various sections of Nigeria's local communities through its backward integration programs to empower local farmers, skilled workers and suppliers. After deploying a very successful group strategy of acquiring previously sick companies and quickly turning them around to winning ways over the decades, Sona Group has recently ventured into uncharted waters as it started to bring in new investments, modern technology, state-of-the-art machines and modern management techniques into an array of brand new startups focused on providing high value business to business and business to consumer products and solutions. With a vision to continually raise quality standards in everyday needs and deliver optimal value to all stakeholders and a mission to deliver the best possible quality of products at the most affordable prices at all times for mutual benefit Sono Group now has nine subsidiaries, each of which parades a very robust portfolio of highly successful brands that boast of very strong brand equities in the marketplace, and many of which are leaders in their segments. Most instructive and more interesting, however, is the one common denominator, 
which characterizes all of them. They all have almost 100% local content. This, as the group claims, derives from its ideology of indigenization. Sonar Group's high-performance subsidiaries include Coronation Power and Gas Limited, Coronation Real Estate Development Limited, Euro Global Foods and Distilleries Limited, Food, Agro and Allied Industries Limited, Shanghai Packaging Industry Limited, Shanghai Technologies Limited, Sona Agro Allied Foods Limited, Sona Industries Gases Limited, and Tech Blue Nigeria Limited. Sona Group is almost uh, more than 30 years, you know, old group, and we are into the different, you know, sector of manufacturing. We are in the food. In the food sector, we do you know, the snacks, biscuit. We also do malt extract. And then we also in the drinks business, where we do alcoholic, non-alcoholic drinks. And a lot of other drinks, including malt drinks, also waters. And apart from the food industries, then our other major segment is plastic industries. In plastic industries, again we have different you know segment into the plastic business. One of the major segment is a injection molding, you know, injection molding division, where we do mainly the crates, plastic crates, a lot of uh, old house uh, items like basin, buckets, then plastic furniture, table, chairs and also we do it for the mm -hmm. furniture for the kids, mm -hmm. a small chair and table and the study tables and we also do a lot of other industrial plastic segment which is done in the injection molding process which is plastic pallets, those are plastic pallets are very good and uh, it is taken care for all the industrial uses, especially in the food industries and for the chemical industries and the softening and the beverages industries. Apart from the plastic pallets, we also have the other industrial items like paint containers, caps and closures, etc. So we have wide range of plastics, you know, in the injection division you know, of the plastic. Then the second segment of plastics is the flexible packaging. Flexible packaging we started five years ago and in the flexible packaging we are doing a lot of, you know, things, especially laminated, printed laminates where it used for all the application, mainly the food application, soap and detergent, vegetable oil packaging, we have very good, uh, you know, technology, barrier film, five-year blown film that is give a very high barrier properties for the, for the food items where you can keep the food very fresh for a longer time. Sono Group of Industries is deservedly our brand in focus for this edition. The Nigerian marketing and advertising industry no doubt offer a huge potential for prospective investors and professionals with requisite skills and competences to tap into the market. Marketing Edge on TV is a foot period of happenings and developments in the integrated marketing and communication space of the Nigerian economy. Watch out for top players, gladiators and professionals in the competitive business of brand management and management of brand business in Nigeria. From the cerebral and glamorous advertising professionals to the well-groomed marketing whisket dictating and directing brand management business. Watch Marketing Edge on TV, only on TVC News. That was our brand in focus and we featured Sona Group. If you've just tuned in, you're watching Marketing Edge on TV. On our industry conversation segment today, we shall be taking a look at generational shifts in the advertising and creative industry. And I have two discussants with me today in the studio. I have Ayola Bade Belu, a self-titled chief nomad 
and CEO of Bejoin. And I also have Ozoimena Ozon Banefo of O2 Academy. Welcome to the studio, Ayala. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you. So and of course, Ozon, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. Today, as I said earlier, we shall be talking about generational shifts in advertising and creative industry. My first question to you, will you subscribe to the popular saying and thinking in the industry that there is a generational shift in the creative advertising industry in Nigeria? Yes, I do subscribe to it, um, owing to the fact that uh, there are quite a number of creative, new creative businesses that are springing up. And uh, all of them tend to have a different um, outlook to, you know, the offerings that they are, uh, you know, pushing in the market. Um, and so definitely the other, the businesses that have been around for, for a while, um, the interesting part is some of the people that are starting these businesses actually broke out of, you know, businesses that have been in existence for a while. So naturally, yes, they, they have uh, an outlook, a broader outlook to what obtain, what's going to obtain in the future. And I suppose you also just subscribe to that thinking. Sure. Um, okay. Generational shift is always happening. Mm -hmm. um, um, when you take it back to um, some 50 years ago, uh, used to be the, the, the traditionals. Yeah. And they moved to the baby boomers. The, boomers. the baby boomers to the Generation X. That's uh, generation. my generation. <laughs> To the millennials and of mm -hmm. course generation z is also um keen yeah so it's always happening and it's something we just have to embrace and okay. find a way to deal with it and still get return on investment for brands okay so ayola would you um ascribe this to the dwindling fortunes of the um, older agencies the traditionals because uh, you, you said earlier at the beginning that the new, the creative agencies now that we have, they are those who came out of the older ones. So would you ascribe it to the dwindling fortunes of the older uh, agencies? Yeah, I wouldn't particularly call it dwindling fortune. If we think of the fact that some of these agencies were responsible for very great work in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I just think, I believe very strongly in that um, saying that change is it, you know, one of the most constant things in life. Uh, so I believe every business should have a plan, you know, for, for, for the future, what we tend to call succession planning. I mean, uh, Ozone already mentioned, um, it kind of tried to categorize it. I'm grateful that I actually belong to the millennial category. And so, um, so essentially it feels as if I've missed two generations, it's, it's mentioned two other generations yeah. before mine. And the baby boomers. Exactly. And then, you know, when you then think of the fact that there is a generation Z mm -hmm. actually itching to even do better, do better and exactly and run even quicker. And so the language of today is, is speed, as you've actually mm -hmm. just said it. Not a lot of people have the time anymore to wait and look at a billboard um, or sit and watch TV ads yes. the way they used to consume it back mm -hmm. then on TV. You know, um, now it's everything is mobile first. I mean, so everything has to happen on their mobile phones. Mm -hmm. And so um, for most, of course, I'm not saying this is uh, exclusive. Okay. I'm saying that we need to understand the language of the consumer. Uh, um, and, and then we can then tailor our um, ideas or should I, our communication, you know, to, so to this consumer. Doing? Exactly. Okay, it's still marketing edge on TV. And we're talking about... Um, generational shifts in the advertising and creative industry. Okay, so finally, how do you think brand owners can harness, um, how do you think they can key into the generational shifts to their favor? Um, I, I believe very strongly that we need to be, uh, brand owners need to be, be very proactive. They need to become more like fortune tellers. I mean, to, like you're predicting you become predictive. You're, you're thinking of what, what's going to happen next, not even now. Because just like I said earlier mm -hmm. about speed, um, the truth about uh, that is what we see now expires in seconds. Yes. You know, so it means we need to predict you know, what would happen in the next couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. all right? And then if we could do that, um, we invest a lot in data. We invest a whole lot in research. And we invest no doubt in technology because technology has actually, it's not negative in any way, it's enhanced what already exists. 
Some um, I also have something that um that has always uh, worked in the past, and um, a few research I've done, I found out that um, it falls into these three later words at the ROI. Now, the ROI, of course, you and I know is return on investment, mm -hmm. but um, the ROI I'm talking about here is relevance, originality, and impact. Okay. Now, for every brand that embraces these three principles, I trust, I trust will get the return on investment. How? Mm -hmm. Because when a brand is relevant, and of course, you have to stay relevant when you are more informed. Because like um, he rightly pointed out, when you run a knowledge-based economy now, so the more you know, the more you acquire. The knowledge you have about your consumer, your market, your competition, and all that. Then the other one is originality. You know, coming up with stuff that is not um, something that is fresh, something powerful, something that is larger than life. Mm -hmm. And the last is um, impact. And that's where being a people-centric brand and not customer-centric. Okay. When you appeal to people, is emotions, you know, you communicate empathy mm -hmm. and not you sell your brand. At that point, consumers are loyal to you, not even knowing why they follow the brand because nobody cares to know how much you know until they see how much you care. And so that's, that's the key for me. Oh, I want to say a big thank you to you, gentlemen. Ozan, thank you for coming. And also Ayala. Thank you very much thank for having you. us. Well, I have been speaking with uh, two gentlemen of the new creative generation. I have uh, Ozan Mbanefu to my right. He is uh, the founder of Nigeria's leading art school of brands and marketing communications, Oxygen Academy. And he started, uh, well, in his two-bedroom apartment, actually. Yes, in 2007. And, of course, since then, he has never looked back. And uh, he's still pushing harder, training young professionals in the creative industry. And, of course, uh, we have um, Ayola Badi Belo to my left. Ayola Badi Belo is the self-titled chief nomad and CEO, founder and CEO of Bedouin. And, uh, well, he is uh, a growth hacker and also an emerging tech and social entrepreneur. He has had uh, 13 years experience in the marketing communication industry where he has also demonstrated entrepreneurial leadership and uh, innovative skills in his previous roles. So you want to know more about them, you could just go online and Google them, I'm sure. Thank you. All right, so it is still Marketing Edge on TV and we have been discussing generational shifts in the advertising and creative industry. With us. That's our package this week on Marketing Edge on TV, Nigeria's leading television initiative on the business of brand management and the management of brand business. Join us again next week where we'll bring you another package. I am Dili Agadumu. <laughs>